Hello and welcome to this video. I'm going to go through the solutions to the questions on domain and range. If you want to try the questions first, you can find a link to those in this video's description. So for this first question, I'm just going to substitute in the endpoints of my domain. So we'll start with five. So five squared plus two, that's 25 plus two, which is 27. We'll then do the same thing with 11. So 11 squared plus two, 11 squared is one, two, one, and plus two is one, two, three. So the range of this function, f of x, is in between 27 and 123. For this question, we need to give a reason why x is greater than 0 is not a suitable domain for g of x. So we just need to find a value which is in the domain, so something bigger than 0, which means this function is not defined. So a sensible place to start is perhaps x equals 1, so we'll do square root of 1 take away 4, which is the square root of negative 3. Now you can't square root a negative number, so this is already a problem. In fact, this function would not be defined at the points x equals 1, x equals 2, or x equals 3. For this question, we're going to write our function, 4x plus 2, is equal to each of the points at the end of the range. So we'll start with negative 18, so 4x plus 2 equals negative 18, and the other side, 4x plus 2 equals 10. This just gives you two equations to solve, so on the left one, if we take away 2 from both sides, 4x equals negative 20, and then x equals negative 5. For the other one, take away 2 from both sides, 4x equals 8, and then x equals 2. So we found the domain. The domain is x is in between negative 5 and 2. In this question, the function produces a straight line graph, so I'm just going to substitute in the values from the domain. So let's start with negative 3. We do 2 take away 5 lots of negative 3, which equals 17. And then we'll go with 5, so 2 take away 5 lots of 5 is negative 23. So the range of this function, f of x, is in between negative 23 and 17. For this question, we need to know why x is greater than 0 is not a suitable domain for g, so we need to find a value where the function is not defined. In this case, it's x equals 3, because if you substitute in 3, you get 3 plus 1 over 3 take away 3, which equals 4 over 0. Now you can't divide a number by 0, so this function is not defined at x equals 3. For this question, we need to try and work out the domain. What I'll do for this question is write my function equal to the endpoints of the range, so 2x cubed equals negative 250, and 2x cubed equals 16. To solve the left one, divide both sides by 2, so you get x cubed equals negative 125, and then cube root both sides, so x equals negative 5. On the right one, divide by 2, you get x cubed equals 8, and then cube root both sides, you get x equals 2. So the domain for this function is x is in between negative 5 and 2. For this question, we need to work out the domain as well. So what we'll do is write our function equal to the endpoints of the range. So 36 over x equals 1.5. To solve this, you'll end up with x equals 36 divided by 1.5, which is 24. And if we use the other endpoint, then 36 over x equals 12, which gives you x equals 36 over 12, which is 3. So the domain of this function is x is in between 3 and 24. In this question, we need to find the value of x for which the function is not defined. This function won't be defined if we divide by 0, so we need this bottom part of the fraction here to come out as 0. So 2x minus 3 equals 0. If we add 3 to both sides, we get 2x equals 3. Divide both sides by 2, and you'll get x equals 3 over 2. To start this question, I'm going to draw the graph of y equals sine of x. It looks like this and it goes between negative 1 and positive 1. The function we've been asked to do is sine of x plus 1, so we need to translate this graph one unit upwards, like this. This new graph will now go between 0 and 2. So, the range of this function is h of x is in between 0 and 2. It's really important you use less than or equal to signs on this one because you can actually get the value 0 and you can actually get the value 2. For this question, I'm going to draw a sketch of the graph y equals 2 to the x. It would look something like this. It crosses the axis at 1, but it never reaches the x-axis. The function we've been given is 2 to the x minus 1, so we need to translate this graph down 1. So this time it will cross the axis at the origin instead, and rather than never meeting the x-axis, it will never meet the line y equals negative 1. So the range of this function is every value that's greater than negative 1, so f of x is greater than negative 1. For this question, we have g of x equals x to the power 4. Let's draw a sketch of that. It would look something like this. 
and we've been given the domain is less than negative 3. So we're interested in the section of the graph that's to the left of this, this part here. So we need to work out this value here on the y-axis. To do that, we'll substitute in negative 3, so negative 3 to the power 4 is positive 81. So the range of this function is everything that's greater than that, so its g of x is greater than 81. For this question, I'm going to draw a sketch of the graph 3x squared, which looks something like this. And we've been told our range goes from 0 to 300, so let's mark on a point 300, and we need to find the domain. So we're interested in what values you can input to this function to get 300 as an output. That would be these two values here. So let's set our equation, 3x squared equals to 300, divide both sides by 3 and you get x squared equals 100, and then square root both sides and you'll get two solutions, x equals plus or minus 10. So the values on the x-axis here are plus and minus 10. We can now see the domain of this function is x is in between negative 10 and 10. You need to use less than or equal to signs here because 300 was included in the range. For this question, I'm going to draw a sketch of the graph cos of x. Now it goes between negative 1 and 1, and it looks something like this. And the domain for this question we've been given is in between 30 and 60 degrees. So those will be somewhere about here. So we're interested in only this section of the function here. To work out the range then, we need to substitute in the endpoints of our domain into the function. So we need to do cos of 30, which you should know is an exact value, square root 3 over 2, and we also need to do cos 60, which you should know again an exact value is 0 0.5, or 1 half. So we found the range of this function, it's in between 0 0.5 and square root 3 over 2. Make sure you get these the right way around, square root 3 over 2 is greater than 0 0.5, so it needs to go on the right hand side. For this function here, g of x, we've got a quadratic graph. If you sketched it, it would look something like this. And since we're doing for all x, we just need to find the lowest part of the graph, this point here. To do that, we can complete the square. So if we take the function, you could write this as x plus 2 all squared, take away 4, take away 3, which simplifies to x plus 2 all squared, take 7. So the coordinates of this lowest point here, the vertex, are negative 2, negative 7. So the lowest possible y value is negative 7. So the range of the function is g of x is greater than or equal to negative 7. In this question, we're told that the function has two stationary points. You find stationary points when dy by dx equals 0. So let's differentiate the function. Differentiating x cubed gives you 3x squared. Minus 9x squared would give you negative 18x. And 24x gives you plus 24. And the negative 15 will disappear. So to find the stationary points, we set dy by dx equal to 0. We can divide both sides of this equation by 3, so we get x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals 0. And this factorises nicely, it's x minus 4, x minus 2 equals 0, giving you two solutions, x equals 4 and x equals 2. Now we were asked to find the coordinates, so we need to substitute these back into the original function to find the y values. So let's do x equals 4 first. So at x equals 4, We've got y equals 4 cubed, take away 9 lots of 4 squared, plus 24 lots of 4, take away 15. This will give you 64, take away 144, plus 96. And this simplifies to give you 1. So we have our first coordinate, it's 4, 1. Now let's substitute in x equals 2, so at x equals 2, y equals 2 cubed, minus 9 lots of 2 squared, plus 24 lots of 2, take 15. 2 cubed is 8, take away 9 lots of 2 squared is take away 36, 24 lots of 2 is 48, and all of this simplifies to give you the value 5. So the second stationary point has coordinates 2, 5. Now the question also asked us to determine their nature. So to do this we find the second derivative, d2y by dx squared. So let's differentiate what we got for dy by dx, the 3x squared will give you 6x, negative 18x will give you negative 18, and the 24 is a constant, so that disappears. Now to find the nature of the stationary points, we take the x-coordinate and substitute that into d2y by dx squared. So we'll start with the one 4, 1. So we'll substitute in 4, so 6 lots of 4 take away 18 gives you 6. That's a positive value, so the nature of the point is a minimum. We'll do the other one, so here 2, 5, the x coordinate is 2, so 6 lots of 2 take 18 is negative 6. This is negative, 
so the nature of that point is a maximum. For part b of this question, we have the same function, and we've been given the domain 0 to 3, and we need to work out the range. Let's draw a sketch of what we know so far. We found out in part a that there's a maximum at the point 2, 5, and there's a minimum at the point 4, 1. Let's remind ourselves of the graph f of x, which is this function here, and now we could substitute in the endpoints of our domain to add some more information to the graph. Let's start with 0. So if we do 0 cubed, take away 9 lots of 0 squared, plus 24 lots of 0, take 15, we get negative 15. So we can add an extra coordinate to the graph at 0, negative 15 down here. Now let's do 3. So 3 cubed, take away 9 lots of 3 squared, plus 24 lots of 3, take 15, and that gives you 3. So there's a point 3, 3 on this graph. This graph is a cubic function with a positive x cubed, so you know it's going to form this sort of shape. And remember the 2, 5 and the 4, 1 were maximums and minimums, so we know it looks like this. Now we've been asked about the range from 0 to 3, so we don't need anything to the right of the coordinate 3, 3. So let's remove that. So this is the function that we need to work with. You can see the lowest point down there at the bottom, 0, negative 15, and the highest point is at 2, 5. So if we look at the y coordinates of those, the lowest y coordinate would be negative 15 and the highest one would be 5. So the range of this function is f of x is in between negative 15 and 5. You need to be very careful with your inequality signs here though. Since we can't actually substitute in 0, since it's not in the domain, we can't actually get negative 15, so we'll use a less than sign. However, we can achieve the point 5, since when we substitute in 2 we get 5 and 2 is inside the domain. So we use a less than or equal to sign for the 5. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.